Hello. This PowerPoint session is to focus and highlight a Venture Team Leadership Summit that will occur in Colorado. This PowerPoint is set up very similar to the other Team Leadership Summits. However, this session is going to focus on particulars about this camp, how we're going to communicate with you about a Venture Summit, and highlighting some of the fun, different activities, and um, locations around camp. As always, if you have any questions about any of the Teen Leadership Summits, please feel free to contact us, and I will share our contact information in a couple of slides with you, but it also can be found on our website as well. First, I would like to start off with introductions. Dr. Casey Mole is our Extension 4-H Specialist and 4-H Military Coordinator at the University of Georgia and has been overseeing these camps for many years now. Marilyn Huffwaller has been working alongside Dr. Casey as our Logistics Coordinator. Stacy Wilson is new to the team as the Extension 4-H Accounting Assistant. Casey Bozeman has served in several different roles for the 4-H Military Partnership but most recently is currently um, serving as a 4-H agent and county extension coordinator in Liberty County and serves a couple weeks during the summer assisting us with these camps as well as supporting our ideas and thoughts and helping us carry out um, some of the behind the scenes parts throughout the entire year. And my name is Laura Goss and I'm the 4-H military camp coordinator and new to the team like Stacy Wilson. I will be presenting this PowerPoint for you all today. Adventure Teen Leadership Summit will occur in August. Adults arrive one day prior, just like the other Teen Leadership Summits, to prepare for the camper's arrival, to do some last minute training, and go over any questions that the volunteer leaders might have. Youth arrive on August 6th this year, and all individuals will depart on August 11th. This camp will happen in Colorado in Estes Parks, and our camp host will be Chile, Colorado Camps. Contact information. This is a great tool to communicate with us directly, and that is through Mill Camps. Dr. Casey, Ms. Marilyn Huffwaller, and myself check this email daily and we strive to, to respond as soon as we can, and if we don't know the answer, we'll always make sure to find one for you. Pre and post camp, you can contact us at the State 4-H office at the number listed on the screen. In fact, that number will work for us all year, um, but for the camping sessions, if you have a camp at that camp location that we're serving, say we're at Chile in August, and and an emergency happens at home, if you want to get to us directly, the Google Voice number is going to be really handy for you because Dr. Casey or some of our other extension specialists working with us on site will have this phone number and can answer questions. We would like to highlight our donor and funder for this camp, and that is the Air Force Services Activity Child and Youth Programs. Um, and so we want to make sure that you guys know that youth programs is really the reason why we're able to have these camps. We owe their leadership team a lot of gratitude and for their time and willingness to kind of really get these programs on their end started so that Georgia 4-H can, can implement and really lead the impact while on site and leading up to. So I would like to thank Ms. Deb Wiley, Mr. Alan Ray, Ms. Patty Merhans, and Mr. Marlin for all that they do for these programs throughout the entire year. So if you can write them a thank you letter um, talking about how excited you are about the camps, and definitely after the camps, that would be wonderful so that they know how much you appreciate their leadership. Who will be working with youth? We do have a great amount of volunteers serve at our camp, averaging about 20 to 25 
volunteer leaders in addition to our camp counselors that I'll highlight in a moment. But our volunteer leaders are made up of a wide audience. A majority of our volunteers are going to be coming from military families, and these military folks can be military members, either retired or current, and also military spouses. We also have former and present 4-H camp counselors go to Colorado camps with us. So camp counselors that worked at Wasega or Rock Eagle, one of our other 4-H centers in Georgia, we'll take a couple of those folks to assist with us um, to the camps. And then we also take on passion, passion jet, <laughs> I can't say that word today, but we also take Georgia 4-H volunteers that serve in the county level um, in Georgia that also would like to serve and give back to military members. Some of these folks are gonna be retired military members. And then some of them are just gonna be passionate people that love working with youth and want to help out at this particular camp. We also take UGA Extension employees in addition to Dr. Casey Mole, Miss Casey Mole, or excuse me, Miss Casey Bozeman and myself. We also take a couple of different agents and staff members to help us with different risk management protocol and teaching some of our lessons on site. So we have a wide range of volunteers that are excited to serve with you. The other thing that I would highlight about our volunteers with Georgia 4-H is that all volunteers and staff go through a screening process and it includes reference checks as well as risk management training and different items to make sure that these volunteers are not only pass passionate about working with volunteers but also are safe to work with our 4-H military audience. Who will be working with youth continued? Trained counselors. So here at Chile camps, they do have on-site counselors that have been serving at that camp throughout the summer. And so those counselors are going to be um, serving as our hiking instructors, our horse instructors. They'll be assisting during the rock climbing portions of the camp in different variety of roles leading our youth that relate to Chile. And so these counselors are trained in the following areas, first aid, CPR, lifeguard, and road course certified. Um, in addition, our camp counselors that we're bringing from Georgia 4-H that I mentioned previously are also trained in these areas. Medical services, we do have a nurse on site and they will help oversee any medical concerns that might happen from needing a Band-Aid for, for a cut, to having a headache, or even some more serious situations. If a situation is more serious than what our nurse can handle, we do have um, some medical centers not too far from us, about 20 or less minutes. The Estes Park Medical Center and the Timberland Medical Walk-In Clinic is also available, and there's some other units nearby as well. And like I said, our counselors are trained in first aid, CPR, and also AED, which I did not mention previously. Medication. Our nurse will be administering all medications to youth, including ibuprofen, over-the-counter medications like Benadryl, or items that you bring from home that the youth member needs to take at, um, say, their breakfast meal to start off their day. So a nurse will be in charge of that, and we oversee that by ensuring that all youth, once they get to camp, actually turn their medications in. And so medicine that is provided by the nurse, which should be all medicine, will be logged by the nurse so that if there's any question on what was given to that child, how much or when, we actually have a log that will track that. Also, first aid services are also tracked. Special diets and allergies. If you're a child or if you're the youth member watching this presentation, we do also accommodate special diets, food allergies like gluten or peanut, religious dietary restrictions, or if for some reason you have something else that needs to be addressed that's not in that above list, please just let us know by informing us on our medical release form that will be released to you 
in the application packet for those who are selected to attend the camp so that we can prepare properly. If you don't let us know until you arrive at camp, it's a lot harder for us to accommodate for you. But if we have a couple months, a week, or, or you know, some more time, we can definitely make sure that the camp staff know to get a special milk for you or to have a different tortilla for you as well. If you have any other medical concerns that we need to know about, please let us know. And we, again, will tr strive to always accommodate and assist you as a camper as best as we can. It is, a, it is our goal to make sure that as you travel to and from camp that you feel comfortable and confident, besides maybe the couple of butterflies of excitement for going to camp. So we wanna focus a little bit on how we are going to coordinate travel. And so this is what we want you to expect from us. We want you to know that when it comes to flying to go to camp, you should have the following items before you ever leave home. And those are going to all be communicated with you via email. So you will get graphics at the airport that you'll be flying into. For this case, it will be Denver, Colorado. You'll have contact information. So if you're confused about anything leading up to or during travel, you can contact us through that Google Voice number. And of course, you will also get a packet that includes your ticket confirmation, what airline you'll be flying with, and other items that are related to flying through a particular airline. So the University of Georgia will be purchasing and coordinating all travel. So in the application itself, you're gonna let us know what airport is closest to you that is a major airport, and then how you would like to get to camp. So how will you get to camp particularly? Well, there's actually three options. So for those who live in Colorado or near Colorado, will or can be dropped off by the airport if that's closest to you. We've had campers who actually live in Colorado Springs, so they just drive over to Denver and their parents drop them off there. For others, being dropped off at camp is a closer option. So if that's the case, that's wonderful. However, most youth will travel by plane. We are um, inviting youth that are at any station around the globe. So we have had youth members come from Germany in the past, Hawaii, Alaska, Georgia, all over. So if that's you, you're gonna be traveling by an airplane. And so the previous slide um, that I mentioned, and then this is also very important to you. Um, when you fly through the airport or on the airplane, um, you're gonna get to a terminal, and from that terminal, it's gonna be your responsibility as a youth member to get from the terminal to baggage claim. And that's where the Air Force volunteers are gonna be waiting and excited to welcome you to Denver. And so we're all gonna be in matching shirts. It could be red, but in your final packet, we'll let you know what color shirt we'll be wearing. And we'll be on the other side of security. So you do have to, again, make it from the terminal to outside of security to get to the volunteers. However, if there's any issue as you are traveling or finding us, again, you can contact us. The airport departure and return will be coordinated through charter buses. A UGA staff person will assist the youth members on and off the buses. Make sure that before we leave that all youth are accounted for. So how we do this is we will get a group of about 30 or so youth who have arrived at the airport, we'll make a bus roster, and then those youth members will get onto the bus. And then as more youth fly in that day, we'll get some more youth, we'll load them onto the bus, and they'll head to camp. It actually takes about an hour and a half to get to Estes, Colorado from Denver. So there's plenty of time to get to know other youth and volunteers as you travel from the airport. We are gonna be sending some resources to again help you feel comfortable and confident as you travel. So you will receive an airport map in your youth packet, an airline flight tracker information, and this is to assist family in tracking youth flight in case of any changes. 
We will be overseeing about 100 or so folks coming into Denver Airport. So it's a lot of coordination on the UGA side. So uh, if families and youth can be prepared on, on tracking their own flights, making sure that if any flight changes that you communicate with parent or parent to child, that really helps us out a lot in making sure that all youth um, are getting to and from camp it takes a little bit less off of us. However, if you have questions or need assistance, that's also why we are here and we're here to help you. Airport flight signs are also helpful so that if you don't download the airline flight tracker onto your phone, like a, the Delta app or American Airline app, you can look throughout the airport for any changes. So if you get off and you have a layover, sometimes lay, layovers do change. So you need to make sure that your terminal is still the same from where when you left that morning at your original airport. Communication. This goes specifically for travel days. So we do strive to communicate directly with youth on travel days so that if there is a major issue going on or we haven't seen the youth member show up to baggage claim and it's been a little while, we'll text the youth and say, hey, do you need any help? We're glad to, to assist you. We haven't seen you yet. And um, that really helps to cut down the communication from staff member to parent to youth member to youth member to staff member to, you know, the, the whole cycle. So if we can communicate directly to youth, that can also cut down the communication and sometimes confusion that can be caused. However, I do want to make you aware that if you do not want us to communicate directly with your child, that is completely fine and we do not have to do that. And the University of Georgia is going to <clears throat> have the Air Force Youth Center send you all a form, and that form's gonna say, would you like the University of Georgia 4-H to communicate directly with your child? You can say no, yes, will not affect anything um, about your child's acceptance or anything like that. So please just fill that out when you get it. Let us know how you want us to communicate with you um, or your child, and we'll be happy to accommodate that. Um, and we do want you to know that we strive um, in coordinating these camps and in our communications to create independence and responsibility for our youth. And so that's just another way that we strive to do it by communicating with them. What if your child does not have a phone? So we've been talking a lot about um, communicating with your child or with you. And if your child does not have a phone, it's okay. Um, you do not need to go and buy one just for traveling purposes. So one way is while you're actually at camp, the, they can use a volunteer or staff member's phone in case of emergencies. Um, but if you are actually traveling throughout the airport camper and you have questions and you can't seem to find us for whatever reason, airport staff are there to help and they can assist you. Um, sometimes it can be confusing trying to find baggage claim in particular airports and I know that. So please, um, talk to an airline stewardess or anything like that, and they'll definitely be able to direct you in the right direction. <clears throat> and parents, if there's an emergency at home or anything like that, we ask that you call us um, at our Google Voice number and let us know, and we'll be sure to handle it in the most appropriate way. Um, or if, if you need to talk to your child because of an emergency at home, we can assist with that. Um, but we do ask that you do not communicate with us just to see how your son or daughter is doing. It should be an emergency purpose only. We strive, again, to create independence for our youth while they're at camp and try to immerse the youth member in as much fun and learning as possible while they're at camp. So if you don't hear anything from us while at camp, that means that awesome things are happening and we're just really busy having fun. The camp facility and cabins um, at Chile, Colorado camps are what I would call rustic. They do not have air conditioning, um, but they are set up in a way that um, is really intimate and allows for great conversation at night and before the day gets started. So it's really nice because you always get to know your cabin so well at camp. 
Um, this is a picture of one of the cabins that in recent years we've used for um, some girl cabins. And so they, it is a bunk bed style and um, the bathroom is not attached to the cabin. So we do have to use bathhouses while at camp. And those bathhouses are communal for adults and for youth, but they are not shared by girls and boys. So boys have their own showering area and then girls have their own showering and toilet areas as well. And how we manage it between the adults and the youth members is that adults have their separate showering time in the beginning of the morning and then youth members come in after. So youth, you guys get to sleep in a little bit extra each day. The facility around camp, I would like to highlight a little bit. This is Chapita Lodge, and Chapita Lodge is where you'll register once you get to camp, and a lot of our main events are going to occur when we're doing a big group activity. This is the chapel. The chapel is used for some of our leadership lessons, and is a great place to enjoy the Colorado weather, as well as hanging out with different friends that you make throughout camp. Um, this is our outdoor kitchen at camp that we will enjoy a meal um, of hamburgers and different items outside. Right here is the basketball court where we have um, our flag raising ceremonies and our flag lowering ceremonies. And what's awesome about that is that as you're standing on the basketball court, you get to enjoy this beautiful view as the flag is either going up or going down each day. Here's some fun places around camp. We have a, two basketball courts at Chile, which are great. We have some porches that look out onto that view, which also create just a great relaxing time. And if you are also wanting to relax, but indoors, you can enjoy some of our lodges, which is pictured right here in the lower middle screen. Right here is a picture of the inside of the dining hall. Um, and this is where you'll be eating. It's a family style. Um, so you'll eat in groups. Over on the right-hand screen is the ping-pong table that's located in Chapita Lodge, which is usually full of youth watching or playing themselves. And then also another picture of Chapita Lodge is this inner side right here. And there's plenty of chairs for youth to sit and hang out there as well, um, or for our different classes that might be occurring. So adventure activities in the Rocky Mountains. Adventure activities are going to be our classes that will occur in the morning led by Chile staff. So right here is a rock climbing class going on. We actually, for this particular class and some of our other rock climbing classes, we'll actually climb on rock faces, which I'm not sure if you are as familiar with this or not, but it was when I went two years ago to this camp, it was my first time ever climbing on a rock face as opposed to actually um, having holds given to me. So it's a really unique experience and um, I think you'll really enjoy it. This is a, an example of a hike. So we do several hike adventures at Chile and um, a lot of the hikes are gonna focus on peaking a mountain. So you really get to experience the Rocky Mountains while at camp. Another way to experience the Rocky Mountains is by horse. There's two horse options at camp. We have a horseback riding, which is seen here on trail. And then we also have educational classes in the horse ring as, as an option. Biking is another favorite at Chile. And there will be different um, classes led by the counselors, mountain biking around the area. And this is another picture of a hike. So some of the hikes are gonna focus on peaking, like I said. Some of them are gonna be focusing on seeing a beautiful lake. And here you'll see that they actually were able to go to a waterfall. So some other camper choice fun activities that are going to occur, some of them actually happen on site, which are shown here, except for one of them actually. So we're gonna have some leadership classes in the evening. One of the classes that they've done in the past at Chile is actually doing like a sports recreation morning. And so they actually went and did some rock climbing indoors, which is seen on the left-hand screen. Um, there's a rifle class 
And right here in the middle is a fun sports class that I think right here they're actually doing ultimate frisbee, but they play lots of different um, games. They've done basketball in the, in the past with a mixture of other side games. So if you like sports, that might be a great option for you. And the top right here is, um, I don't know what to call it <laughs> per se, but if you like an extra challenge, um, this class includes not only rappelling and climbing up the rock face, but actually moving yourself across the gorge on a tightrope. And then on the far um, right side of the screen is fishing, and below that is craft. So we have a variety of different craft classes. Um, they've done bracelet making in the past. They've also um, made some bird houses, different light fixtures, and things of that nature out of wood. So really fun interactive classes. So after you do some extreme hiking in the Rocky Mountains, you might want to choose to do a craft the following day and let your body have a little rest. Some other fun things that occur during camp is actually optional. So when some folks are still sleeping, some youth choose to wake up early at 6 a.m. and um, begin PT or physical training. In the past, we've offered yoga, Zumba, running, basketball, and even CrossFit. So if you enjoy um, getting an extra workout in in the morning, or if you just want to hang out with some of your friends and play some basketball for, before the day gets going, this is a great opportunity for you to have some fun and also get a little exercise in. A typical day at camp um, at Chile is going to start off with optional PT. We'll do flag raising in the morning. We'll do the daily activities, which actually happen from about 8.30 to 3.30. That's a large chunk of time, but in order to hike a mountain or to really embrace yourself in the Rocky Mountains, you really need some more time to do that. So we are um, in our morning classes are going to be rather long, but it won't feel long. It actually feel short because you'll be having so much fun riding the horses or shooting a, shooting a rifle or things of that nature. Once you get back to camp, we'll actually do a leadership rotation. Um, following the leadership rotation, we'll do flag lowering and then dinner. And then we'll do another leadership rotation. And then we'll have night recreation, which will change every day. And then lights out are generally about 11 p.m. So this is kind of the schedule that you can expect per day. Um, now again, those leadership classes and also your 3.30 to 4 p.m. Um, camper choice activities are actually gonna change every day. So one day you might be doing a hike, the next day you might be doing some crafts. So really, while the setup is pretty similar per day, you'll feel that each day is different and exciting in its own way. So what to pack? Well, if you'll notice, I tried to include some different pictures. Some, de some days in the Rocky Mountains can be overcast and a little rainy, and then you can get this beautiful weather down here on the right-hand side. And this really is, can be in the morning versus night too. So when you come to Chile, you need to prepare for cold, hot, mild, rainy, all the little bit of different weather. So even if you look on the weather the week before and you see that no rain is forecasted, I encourage you to go ahead and pack some rain gear with you. When we are hiking, sometimes you get to a certain point where sometimes the weather is just really unpredictable and you might get rained on, which is fine, but we encourage all campers, no matter what, to bring rain gear. At least a sweatshirt or some type of jacket in case it gets cold at nighttime or during the day and then at least one water bottle when you come to camp. Last year we had some cooler weather than typical, so those who brought the extra items were doing really good, and those who didn't pack so well like myself were really wishing we had brought that extra sweatshirt like we had thought about. So don't be like me, be like the prepared campers from last year. Um, we are going to provide some materials to you all. So we are going to provide a military type wool blanket um, to you. So if you prefer to bring your own sleeping bag, you're more than welcome to. But just so you know, there's going to be at least one blanket for you when you attend camp. We're also going to provide one water bottle. Now we encourage you to bring your own and we're going to provide you with one because the altitude is much higher than most places where we all live and drinking a lot of water can help us prevent altitude sickness. 
So please bring your own water, and while you're at camp, drink plenty of water. The backpack is gonna be provided to you so that you can carry different snacks, water bottle, your camera, or a rain jacket on your hikes or different activities. We will also provide a towel and a pillow for your use as well. At um, the Adventure Summit, we do not allow cell phones once you get to camp. So your last communication with your son or daughter will be at the airport when they say they've made it to camp. Um, and so after that, they will have to turn their phone in. And how we handle that, we do make sure that they're secure throughout the entire week. So each youth member will get an envelope and they can put different valuables like their passport along with that if they'd like. And on that envelope, they'll list what they put in there. So at the end of the week, when the Chile staff hands it back to them, we can make sure that what they turned in is what is still inside the envelope. Now we will let the youth get their phones back on the final night of camp so that they can charge their phones, exchange cell phone numbers with other teens, and also communicate with you as well about travel purposes. Why do we take up cell phones? One, that's not listed, it's actually the Chile camp policy that is our host camp, but also we want to make sure that we emerge our youth in the camp setting. We don't want any distractions that are going on at home to affect the overall experience at camp. Also, when you're in the Rocky Mountains, don't worry about cell phones because there is no or reliable service. So there's that. And then less distractions for our teachers and youth and also safety. Code of conduct. Adults and youth will all follow this and even I will follow this as well. So we do expect certain behaviors and certain behaviors do have consequences. So we do expect youth members to attend sessions and to be responsible when a other adult or teacher or, or the like asks them a reasonable request. So we should be respectful to others and be responsive to requests. We also expect youth to dress appropriately, to use appropriate language, and to respect others like I've mentioned. You may not behave in a manner that affects other participants, and you may not access inappropriate websites or materials via technology or bring inappropriate items to camp with you. Consequences or mis of misbehavior is a breach of the code of conduct, and this should be reported, and in fact must be reported whether it's an adult, youth member, or UGA staff member. An incident form will be filled out by a UGA staff member that will be sent to UGA. And depending on the misbehavior, a certain course of action should be followed. I do wanna highlight on the code of conduct, it does focus on law enforcement and legal action required. The possession or legal or use of illegal drugs um, is not allowed and would require legal action. I do wanna highlight that marijuana is illegal in Georgia and not allowed um, on Chile campus as well and is, um, would, be, would have a consequence. Possession or use of a weapon is not allowed, assault or harassment, and inappropriate sexual behavior. The code of conduct that will be included in your use packet will include some other details and information. And I encourage you to read all of the information so that you are fully aware of the expectations and consequences that can occur at camp. Pictures. At camp, we will be taking pictures. Um, we know that when you leave camp, you would like a picture of you at the Rocky Mountains, and I would too. So adults are tasked with taking plenty of pictures of youth while doing activities. And then what we'll do is upload those to a website so that once you leave camp, the memories don't have to die then. Um, and you can actually go onto a website and download them so that you can print them or use them on social media or whatever um, location you would like. The code of conduct does have a statement in there that does release the right to, um, to use your child's photograph. So if there is a reason why you do not want your photo used in different publications or shared, or if for other reasons your child is not allowed to have their photograph taken, please on the top of the code of conduct, write um, that your child's photo cannot be taken. 
Those code of conduct forms will not be shared with other people except for the University of Georgia staff. So if you need to put that on there, and don't worry about it being shared or seen by anybody else. Spending money, this is another common question that we get. How much money should I send and how much does this camp cost? You'll notice that on this screen, I've only included costs related to optional items um, or the baggage fees. So this camp is completely funded by the Air Force Youth Services. Um, so you do not have to worry about paying for lodging, paying for the flights or camp fees or anything like that. What you do have to plan for is if your child wants snacks while at camp, they do have a canteen or a concession on site that includes candy bars, shirts, sweatpants, drinks, and snacks. Um, so if your child or if you plan on having some snacks while you're at camp, you might want to bring $20 to $40 depending on what you would like. Baggage fees are not typically covered um, by the camp fee, so you de do need to plan to about $25 per ticket for your bag. And then travel day meals and snacks, I would suggest around 20 to 30. Airport food can be more expensive than if you just went to a regular fast food restaurant. So you wanna make sure that you prepare throughout the week, but please know that we're excited to be able to offer this camp um, fully funded to you, except for those optional or extra items. Camper mail, um, we love to get mail. We love to give out mail. It's a lot of fun. And the campers love it as well. So if you would like to send a handwritten letter or a package to your camper, you surely can. And so the address is listed right here, but something to note is to help the Chile staff kind of organize the different mail that comes in during the summer, kind of label it with a camp name like Team Leadership Summit and then your camper's name on it and then the address. Um, instead of just saying the camper's name because it will be hard for our Chile staff members to know what, um, what camper to give it to depending on what week because they do have camps going on before we get there and multiple camps going on while we're actually on site. So that's just one helpful hint for you. We do ask that you don't send food um, because we are in the Rocky Mountains and we do have different animals that we need to consider. And also I would like to do a highlight or a, a shout out to our volunteers. I did mention at the beginning that we rely on volunteers to help chaperone and supervise our youth while on site. So we want you to know that if you're interested or if you know of anybody that would do a phenomenal job as a volunteer, we do have um, the following all available for volunteers to still help out at. Um, and that includes camps at Wasiga 4-H Center, at Jekyll Island and at the camp that we're speaking about currently, which is Chile, Colorado camps. If you have questions about um, volunteering, what it entails, how to actually apply, I can answer those questions via phone or via email. So please just reach out to me. I love to help people, anything related to camp. So please help us spread the word about this volunteer opportunity. And if you're considering it yourself, that's awesome. And I'd love to hear from you. I hope that this presentation helped answer maybe some of your concerns or questions. If you still have some other questions for us, please reach out to us. Again, my name is Laura Goss and I work for the Georgia 4-H Military Partnership. And I'm excited to assist you. Best of luck if you are watching this presentation and you're about to apply. And if you've already found out that you're a, you've made it to camp, congratulations, and I look forward to seeing you in August. Thank you, guys.